Hey, groups, welcome to it. As we dive in this week, we are going to be talking about Elijah, the prophet from the Old Testament. Remember Elijah during the time of King Ahab and just just a really brutal time in the history of Israel and Judah. And what we're going to do is take a look at it. We look at some of the major stories that goes on in his life. So I want to start out with kids' questions this week as we dive in and really uh, ask these questions. I want to give you a little pretext, a little bit of, of the setting. So in the story we're going to look at today, we find Elijah in the desert living by a brook. Kind of sounds quaint. He seems like a little bit of an old hippie, right? Just in a VW van down by the river. Um, but he's living by this brook where he gets his water, and he's being fed by the Ravens, not the Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs in the NFL, but the actual birds. You know, ha! Ah, the Ravens. That was a good Raven sound. That was. I'm. I'm impressed with that. Um, and we can assume that the birds aren't flying in a la Uber Eats Chick-fil-A for him every day, which I think would be upsetting for a bird to deliver Chick-fil-A. They'd be like, it's my cousin. <laughs> we got to restart all of this, don't we? Or should we just stay with it? So let's go with it. Elijah is, is living by a brook where he gets his water. The ravens are bringing him food. And you've got to imagine, like, they're not bringing him steak and potatoes, right? He's not getting his normal food. It's not a buffet where he wakes up and it's like being on a carnival cruise ship. He's probably eating just enough to get by. He's probably just maintaining just enough to get by. With that in mind, kids, we dive into your questions. Question number one, what unfortunate situations have you faced in your life? I know you're young, but you've probably had unfortunate situations. What are some of the things that have been hard in your life? So some of the unfortunate situations you may have faced are maybe you've been picked on, had a hard time making friends, didn't succeed at something you tried. Maybe you've been cut from a team, didn't make the play, the musical, you didn't, uh, you got third chair on violin rather than first chair. Maybe you got, you know, beat up on the bus. Maybe you've had problems at home. Maybe, uh, maybe you've gone to bed hungry. Maybe you know some things that, well, kids shouldn't have to know. Elijah was able to give hope to a widow who was hungry because of the hard situations he had faced. What hard situations have you faced? Question number two, how can you take the unfortunate experiences you've gone through in life and allow them to bring the hope of Jesus Christ into the lives of others who may be going through something similar in some way? How can you do that? Take some time and really talk about it. Be creative. Have fun dreaming of the ways that you can take your bad situations and let God do what he says he does. Give beauty out of ashes. Take those broken things and still bring beautiful the, the beautiful hope of Christ into the lives of people who need him. Kids, that's your two questions. I hope you have a great time with your friends tonight in groups. And uh, yeah, enjoy the evening, afternoon, whenever you guys meet. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Same bat time, same you said it, didn't you? Bat channel. See ya. Adults, make sure you stick around. We've got a fun update uh, to share in um, our group's vine. So make sure you stick around for that. Stop fast forwarding for shame. Sit back down. Do the group's content. <laughs> Somebody just caught me doing that. Okay, where or what are you typically doing when God speaks to you? When do you feel the presence of God the most? It's really interesting. I can, I've got a number of times where God has met me, and I would say near water. It sounds super strange. 
Um, but like the last time you think like rivers, like oceans, like on a beach in the Maldives or something. Nope, not at all. I, is, I was standing at the kitchen sink and I was washing dishes and um, the Lord spoke very clearly. And I was like, oh, oh man. Like it stopped me. I told my wife about it uh, a little bit later. I told one of my very best friends about it. And, and I was like, you know, this is what the Lord said to me. And I was literally, I was washing and dish. It was weird. And and I'll be honest, like God showed up and, you know, kind of the proof is in the pudding. God showed up and spoke to me there. And what he spoke to me, he has brought to fruition and made it real over the last um, year, just under a year. It's been nuts. So I want, it's okay. It's, it's random. It's not the same place for everybody. Some people hear from God when they're in the shower, right? Like another non-river-based place of water flowing. Like there's people, it's interesting where God gets us, but quite often he gets us doing the mundane things. He has our full attention because we're really not plugged into anything. We're just kind of mindlessly going about it. Our mind is kind of relaxed and he can speak in. So where? Where for you? Or when does God typically show up and what are you typically doing when he speaks to you? Take some time, think about it, and then really have some fun sharing these stories because I guarantee God speaks to you in interesting and unique ways. Talk about it. Question number two, how purposeful are you in going back to that place? Since mine was dishes, not very purposeful. It's been nine months. No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's not true at all. But, um, but here's one thing with this series that I will say to you. I always wear earbuds when I would do dishes. Not always, but 90% of the time. Listening to books, audiobooks, podcasts. Um, I, I guess if you listen to a book, it is an audiobook. Yeah, but that that has been one of my kind of typical rhythms. And since we started this series leading up into it and recognizing I need to get back in the habit of listening, I've taken them out and um, I'm going back to my places of listening. I do have what I would call thin spots where God usually gets my attention. Uh, I go, I'm going back to those more. So how about you? How often do you purposefully go back to that place where God typically speaks? Question three, well, it's really, I call it three squared. And you're like, I've never heard of three squared. It's because four squared is so much better. All right, um, three squared. It's question number three, but it has three parts. So question three, part one is this. Has God ever met you in your desperate need? So has God ever met your desperate need, whether emotional, physical, or spiritual? This is a tough one because I want you to answer it yes or no. Just give your group a yes or a no. Okay, has God ever met your desperate need, physical, emotional, spiritual? Answer it real quick. Question three, part two, here it is. How did God work through that time to design something beautiful? So you had a desperate need. Now's where you open up and get a little more vulnerable and you share how God got involved in that desperate need to do something beautiful. How did God work in that time to design something beautiful? You might be away from the video for a while as you talk about this one. Question three, part C, part three, whatever you need for it to be. It's just the third part of three. How could you minister to someone else who is in a similar season of desperate need? How could God use you now to be a part of the answer in their life? Take some time, talk about it, and enjoy being in your group with these kind of vulnerable discussions. Go for it. So for the group vines today, um, we got a couple of things to tell you about that are coming up. They're really cool, but they're actually attached to our plumb lines. Now our plumb lines, um, 
are things that are like rules of the road. They keep us um, living within our values, but they also help us function healthfully as a healthy as a staff culture, as a church culture, and they keep us just not only doing our jobs, but living in the faith with, with the fullness of, of life. So one of our plumb lines here on the staff is clarity over creativity, meaning this. If we have a really good creative idea, we will push it away and not do it. If it clouds or makes unclear the issue we're trying to highlight theologically or biblically. So if our great creative idea makes it confusing, makes the scripture confusing, we get rid of a great creative idea because we believe in clarity over creativity. Plumb lines, pretty awesome, right? Um, So we have another plumb line. It's called plan in pencil, which means it's always good to set plans, but we also have to be flexible. Um, It's one of my beatitudes. They're not from the Bible, but blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. Oh, it's pretty awesome. It's actually pretty average. Um, But plan and pencil is one of those things that allows us to be nimble and responsive, and it also lays out a plan. So we're always headed down the right path, but but we plan in pencil. So in, in what I'm about to tell you, I'm asking you to take your pen and set it down and find a pencil because what I'm about to tell you is very likely what's going to happen, but things could change. It's just life. We plan in pencil. Um, in March, two big moves are happening. First of all, the Cummins. You know Matt, who always teases himself for being too skinny? <laughs> Jokes I don't make. Um, but Matt Kuman and his wife have been living with their in-laws, his in-laws for the last number of months. I think he should give them a ham, a turkey, and a prime rib. Just kind of go with the Slaughterhouse 3 and say thank you for your hospitality. That's just my suggestion, but now everybody in groups agrees with me. So you, you have to do it. Slaughterhouse 3. Uh, Matt's been living with his in-laws as they built a new house, and they're getting ready to move into their house. I don't know why that's part of this announcement. It just is. We're planning in pencil because the Cummins may live with their in-laws forever. It's weird. It's just part of it. So there's that little tidbit. The Foundry Church, um, one of our our campuses, is getting ready to open its doors. Um, Foundry Live. So that's where we call Foundry Main right now is where we are kind of hubbed out of. Foundry Live is the new building we've built for Foundry uh, for Foundry Main, the Sunday morning service right here in downtown Zealand. That is uh, moving down the hill, and our occupancy date should be right around the 21st of February, and our first worship service, plan in pencil, should be March 1st in the new building. We'll be hosting an open house between occupancy and worship so that people can come and explore, and then when we come to church, it won't be about the building. But we just wanted to give you an update uh, for the venues, for the campuses who, who don't worship at Maine and probably won't be going to live really you know, on any consistent basis. It's part of your church family, and we just wanted to throw that out there. It's, it's kind of big news. It's really big news, and we're excited about it. And we're also excited to join um, Matt's in-laws for ham, Prime rib, what was it, and turkey? Turkey. Turkey at the end because tripped pan makes me sleepy. I would also like potatoes. Apparently we're having dinner at Matt's house. So March 2nd, we're all going to the Cummins. Just put it on your calendar, Cummins house, for three cuts of meat and potatoes. Have a great time, groups. It was great being with you. Blessings on you and on the Cummins household as they prepare a feast for like 700 of us. That is a generous offer, and we appreciate it. Thank you to the Cummins and to the construction crew making Foundry Live happen. Wow.